Do you need a surge suppressor for your RV? The short answer is yes. In this video I will be discussing the need for surge protectors. I will cover both simple, what I call sacrificial, surge protectors as well as the more complex electrical management systems or EMS. What is a surge anyway? The NEMA Surge Protection Institute states a surge or transient is a subcycle over voltage with a duration of less than a half cycle of the normal voltage waveform. A surge can either be positive or negative polarity, can be additive or subtractive from the normal voltage waveform, and it is often oscillatory and decaying over time. What does that even mean? Basically, it is an abnormally high voltage spike that can damage your equipment. So where do surges come from anyway? The NEMA estimates that 60 to 80 percent of surges are created within a facility. Surges are typically caused by switching transients like motors starting and stopping as well as compressors. And the remaining 20 to 40 percent are caused by external events such as lightning and power grid switching at the power plant. It seems like every time this topic comes up, somebody will say, well I've had a trailer for 40 years and I never needed a surge suppressor. Well, that's true for a trailer that's 40 years old. Those old trailers may have had an air conditioner, converter charger for the battery, maybe a coffee pot, and a few 12-volt appliances. But with today's power-hungry RVs with one, two, or three air conditioners, residential refrigerators, gas and electric water heaters, and so on, as well as a host of sensitive electronics on board, power surges are a significant issue. The simplest form of protection is a surge suppressor. They are typically attached to the end of the RV's shore power cord and cost between $50 and $150. I call these sacrificial surge suppressors as they will fail at some point. The basic device used in a surge suppressor, whether it be the power strip on your computer or the surge suppressors used on an RV, is a device called an MOV or metal oxide resistor. You can think of an MOV as a voltage controlled switch. In the drawing here, we see an MOV that's rated for 200 volts, and any surges above 200 volts will be sent to ground, thereby protecting the circuit. However, MOVs do not protect against low voltage conditions. And as you may expect, the MOVs are available in a wide range of voltages and the energy that they can dissipate. As well, MOVs can be wired in parallel to increase the energy dissipation capability. Unfortunately, MOVs can wear out over time, which is why I call them sacrificial. When MOVs fail, they can overheat. Therefore, some kind of protection circuitry is desired to take the MOVs out of the circuit when they fail. From a historical perspective, the home-style surge suppressor strips, when the MOVs failed, would sometimes catch fire. Well, here is a 30 amp RV style surge suppressor. And it is a little bit different than the traditional suppressors because most suppressors have a short cable on each end with the connectors on the end of the cable. Where this has the connectors on both sides, this is going to be less expensive to build. And in fact, this was around $50. This includes a surge suppressor plus three LEDs along the top and a little legend here that tells you if you have a wiring fault. So when you plug your RV into this and then into the shore power, the status of the LEDs here will tell you if you have a safe connection or not. This is also rated at 1,050 joules. And joules, if you don't know, are a unit of energy. And all the MOVs that you look at will typically be rated in joules. And I've taken the screws out, so when we open it up, we can see that there are six MOVs here. And we have some current limiting resistors here and some uh, diodes here. Those are basically are what drives the LEDs for the status. Everything from here up is for the LEDs and the MOVs are just by themselves. And three MOVs are parallel between hot and ground. The other three MOVs are parallel between hot and neutral. And the data sheet for this particular MOV does say that each MOV can handle 175 joules. So 175 times six is where they get the 1050. Now when I look at this, the first thing that come to my mind is there's no fuse in here. 
or if we look in the warning, the adapter must be used in conjunction with a circuit breaker rated at 30 amps under 25 volts DC. So instead of putting the fuse in here, they're relying on the circuit breaker to provide the fuse. Well, I just don't like that. I think that's a bad design. And also, I do not see any kind of certification. I see no CSA, nor do I see a UL, which is a U.S. certification uh, from Underwriters Laboratories. And I don't know whether they didn't obtain UL certification because it would either not meet it or perhaps they just didn't want to spend the money to do it. And so one of my recommendations when you look for a service suppressor is find one that's UL rated. So our recommendation for purchasing a surge suppressor is to buy one that is UL rated and get as many jewels as you can afford. I encourage you to visit my website rv-project.com by clicking on the link I'll provide here where you can find expanded information as well as a recommended list of surge suppressors and EMS systems. So, is a surge suppressor enough? Well, I would say a surge suppressor is a very bare minimum, but if you can afford it, go with a full-blown EMS system. An EMS system not only includes the surge suppression function, but it also monitors for under and over voltage and under and over frequency and will automatically disconnect your RV if those parameters have been exceeded. Quite simply, it protects your RV when you have a brownout condition in the RV park. The definition of a brownout is an abnormally low voltage in the RV park's electrical system. This low voltage can damage some of your RV's appliances, namely refrigerators and air conditioners, but all of your appliances are subject to damage from this condition. An EMS system monitors park voltage and will automatically disconnect your RV when it sees a damaging voltage and will automatically reconnect your RV when it's safe to do so. And then the next step above a regular surge suppressor is this EMS system. And this one's made by Progressive Industries. It's a 30 amp suppression system. And the funny thing is it's called a surge protector, although down below it says it's a complete management system. And you can get these in hardware or portable versions. However, a lot of people don't like the portable ones because they can get stolen. Now, I did do a video last year on my RV. I have a 50 amp version of this that I installed. And so we have a case, the main case with the input and output here. We have a remote display and on this particular brand you can buy one with a remote display in here. Now this display will show voltage, current, and frequency and whether or not you had a recent error. An error code for normal, reverse polarity, open ground, high voltage, Low voltage, high frequency, low frequency, data link down, replace surge protector, or the PE is a previous error. Now, if you get the 50 amp version like I have in my RV, then you're going to have a line 2. And when we open this up, we see we have a control board here, we have a contactor here, and as well we have this coil that monitors the current. And then here we have the surge protector. And we can pull this surge protector out and look at that real quick. So I found the data sheet for this. And we have two MOVs that are rated for 1200 volts. That's these two. And then the other two are rated for 390 volts, which are these two. These two MOVs go from the hot to the neutral. And these two go from the hot to ground. And here you can see that we also have a fuse on the MOV board. And this board is also replaceable. At some point, these MOVs will fail, blow the fuse, and if you had a surge protector, you're going to throw it away. However, with the CMS system, you can get a new board from the manufacturer. And unlike the surge suppressor we saw previously, this device is UL rated for Canada and the U.S. So the manufacturer took the time to design it right and to get it tested. And when you're dealing with 120 volts AC, this is what you want to see. And so we're going to demonstrate how the EMS works. And again, this is a 30 amp EMS. Uh, the 50 amp EMS from Progressive Industries basically works the same. We have an auto transformer here. And an auto transformer allows you to adjust the output voltage AC. So we're going to use that to vary the voltage from less than 104 volts to more than 132 volts. For the load, we're just using a little LED light 
and it's not going to supply much for a little bit. It'll tell us if it's on or off. So let's turn the power on. And we're looking at 123 volts on the meter. And we are at 123 volts being measured here. Now you see that when I turn this on, there's a delay before the output turned on. And that's because the EMS is going to check the line for a few seconds to make sure it's stable before it allows the RV to turn on. And when we're looking at our display, it measures voltage, current, frequency, error, and then it cycles again and again. And there's also a bypass and normal use. Now we are measuring zero amps because even though we have a load here, it's not really going to demand much current. But that's okay, it doesn't really matter in this situation. Now we're going to take our auto transformer and then we're going to look at our voltmeter and we're slowly going to turn it down until we reach 104 volts. Okay, we're below 104 volts and it turns the power off. And we also get E4. E4 means error 4. Now we're going to bring the voltage back up above 104 volts. And you'll see now that we have a PE4 error. PE4 error means previous error. And 4 again from the chart, we have error 4 is line 1 low voltage. We're going to bring this up to more than 132 volts. And again, it shuts off. You see now we have E3, so that's error 3. Now when we bring this back to less than 132 volts, there's a 15 second delay before this will turn back on. And that delay is primarily because if an air conditioner was running, you don't want to short cycle an air conditioner. In other words, you don't want to turn the compressor on and off, on and off, on and off repeatedly because it can damage it. Now there's two settings in here. There's a 15 second delay, which is the factory default. And there's also a 136 second delay. So which one should you use? Well, some air conditioners have their own delay. So with some air conditioners, when you turn the power off and then the power back on, it will delay itself as long as it needs before it turns on. If you have that type of air conditioner, you can set this for 15 seconds. However, if your air conditioner does not have such an internal delay, then you're going to want to set this for 136 seconds. Now, if we go into bypass mode, we turn it off. So if we go down to less than 104 volts with this off, you can see here the EMS system does not work. And if we turn it back to normal, now it's showing 100 volts and it worked immediately. When it comes to EMS systems, one common question is, will it work with my portable generator? And generally the answer is no. If you have a generator like my Honda EU2000 here, Realize that the ground and neutral are not connected together. So when you try to run the EMS on the output of this generator, you're going to get an open ground error and the EMS will not turn on. Well, you actually have two options. Number one, which I do not recommend, is that you can put the EMS system into a bypass and that will allow the generator to run your RV. However, you're not protecting the RV with the EMS when it's in bypass. And to fix the problem, we need to get one of these generator neutral grounding plugs. This is made by Southwire for SurgeGuard, which is one of the two main competitors in the EMS world. And all this is really is a plug where the ground and neutral are tied together. And so the open ground that most generators have will work with the EMS system, but you need something like this. So here I have a setup that is similar to what we had inside. I've got the generator connected to the EMS system with a LED fixture on the output so we can see if it's on or not. And you can see here we have an E2 error. E2 error means open ground. So you see that the LED is not on. But if I flip it into bypass, now the LED is on, so it's working. However, we no longer have any protection. But then if we take our grounding plug, and plug that in, 
and resetting it. We have an E0, and now it's working with the shorting plug. Well, you cannot run this with an inverter. It doesn't really give the reason why, but I suspect most inverters, the output is fairly dirty. They're either a modified sine wave or they're a square wave. Not too many inverters are really all that clean. Plus, they have harmonics. Some harmonics are really quite high. And all that added together, I am assuming, is messing with the circuitry in here on detecting the low and high voltage. You cannot run this on the output of an inverter.